Next, we're going to show you uh, a film clip. It's a special one. As we said earlier, um, here at the USJC, our members do a lot of the work. And it comes from member initiative, and so do this project, just as the one you saw earlier with the Tohoku Business Challenge. Two of our members from California, Deborah Nakatomi and Diane Fukami, are communication specialists, and they decided to tap their expertise to try to help the Tohoku region. And what they did was produce a documentary. It's called Stories from Tohoku with Heart and Hope. Now, this documentary would not have been possible without financial support from the U.S.-Japan Council. We had an earthquake relief fund in the aftermath of 311. We raised a total of $2.6 million, all of it dispersed by year end, and some of those funds went to fund this documentary that you're about to see now. Now, because our theme is entrepreneurship and innovation, you're going to see a part of the clip that pertains to that theme. But rather than having me explain it, let me call to the stage Debbie and Diane. Three years ago, Diane and I met as strangers in 2009 as members of the Japanese American Leadership Delegation. Excuse me. Uh, the, the Japanese American Leadership Delegation, as you probably know, is sponsored by the U.S.-Japan Council. And this experience for us was life-changing. We are third-generation Japanese Americans, and that visit to Japan and the people that we met stimulated a deeper appreciation and value of the unique relationship that we have as Japanese Americans with Japan. It also piqued our interest and in our desire to contribute at a different level to strengthen U.S.-Japan relations at a people-to-people -people level, which you've heard so much about. March 11th inspired action in the United States, especially among Japanese Americans, as Japanese Americans and Japanese American-led organizations wanted to help. Like many of you, Diane and I were involved in community organizations, and we learned that literally dozens of Japanese American-led organizations had mobilized in the days and weeks following the disaster to raise over $38 million. We were intrigued by this enduring connection that Japanese Americans have with Japan and this sense of wanting to really make a difference to the people in the Tohoku region. We decided to produce a documentary to tell the stories of some of these survivors and some of the leaders who are really helping to forge a path toward the future. There are postcards on your tables that will uh, illuminate you a little bit about the project. So it was one year ago when we were in Washington, D.C., that the U.S.-Japan Council uh, board members approved uh, seed money for our project. Just to give you a little bit of a progress report, our shooting is now complete, and thanks to USJC, Bank of Tokyo, Mitsubishi, UFJ, and travel consideration from Japan Airlines, we are well underway. The editing process is almost done now. We're about halfway through. Um, and we're currently in discussions with NHK and a U.S. broadcaster whose name I don't want to reveal right now. However, there's still some work for, on our parts to be done in terms of a, a funding gap to complete the project. So what we'd like to show you today is a short excerpt. Fred told you a little bit about it, and in keeping with today's theme, it is about entrepreneurship and innovation and how those contributions are making a big difference over in Tohoku in Japan. Now, just to let you know, a rough cut is sort of like a work in progress. It's a preview. And so we welcome any feedback or comments that you may have. Deborah and I will be around all weekend long. Feel free to come up, be honest. And so now, a little excerpt from With Heart and Hope. Hi, you. Hi. Move to you. 
あのそうだと思うあのね苦しければ苦しいほどあのね希望っていうのはやっぱり苦しくないとあの持てないんですよ。未来に向かって希望を持ってもっと積極的にリーダーシップを発揮して生きていくっていうことが特に若い人にとって必要なことだと思う。Because of the, the scope of the disaster and how much attention it called to Japan, it sort of catalyzed this conversation around well, let's not go back to the old way. Let's focus on what's possible and reimagine the future. And as a result of that, naturally, the idea of a, a social innovator, a social entrepreneur, steps into that space. I think that social entrepreneurs, just the language has become more present in Japan. And a lot of these younger folks, people in their, their 20s and 30s, who have really wanted to take that step into that realm. Now, there are some resources to help at least support them to do that. In many ways, what 311 did is it gave this, this, I think, finite window, but still a window to be able to say, hey, something else is possible. I visited so many places in Tohoku area and talked to the people who are living in there. People who lost their families are still trying to make some new value to the community. And that struck me and reminded me that I have to do something. Our mission is to cultivate entrepreneurship among Japanese young people. And we do coordinate those non-profits to the students, also non-profits to the entrepreneurs, that kind of things. In Tohoku area, we send young potential entrepreneurs to the leaders who are doing something like creating new business or doing something good to the community. The earthquake was so big and it was huge. So this has become a chance for them to get much more resources and also public attention and to make a difference and to express their own will and their own, realize their own vision. I had been working for a consulting firm for three years when uh, 311 hit. Japan suddenly faced the biggest issue in, in the century. I had no choice but to tackle that issue, and I decided to quit uh, officially uh, the consulting firm and this establish this organization. E's mission is mainly to promote uh, the distribution of the great food from Tohoku region. With this uh, nuclear instance, retailers and restaurants tend to be reluctant to purchase and sell food from Tohoku region. It's clear that there's huge economic loss, in addition to the physical loss to the soil and rice paddies, also fishery facilities. Even with the non-contaminated food, uh, price has been dropped. We are trying to convince them that uh, there is a market needs for the Tohoku region. There are segments of consumers that actually want and help uh, Tohoku producers. This reconstruction takes a long time and people actually already starting forgetting about this one of the biggest tragedy Japan has ever faced. We have to always remind ourselves what happened and continue supporting Tohoku, we, we, we sh should never uh, forget, we should never uh, ditch Tohoku region.
はあの震災当日津波の上で過ごしてで最初もともとスポーツクラブ割とソーシャルな活動をしてたのでいろんなボランティアあの何か手伝えることはないかって申し出てくれたボランティアと一緒にでそ,れそういう人たちと普通にこう毎日泥まみれになって仕事をしているうちに危険と食のスキルとアイデアを持ってた人たちと。もともと石巻っていうのはあの問題震災前から問題を多かれ少なかれ抱えてたんですそれはコミュニティの少なさだったりとかちょっと閉鎖的なところがあったりとかシャッター通りが続いて経済的に空洞化が地盤沈下が進んでしまってたりとかこう石巻っていう町にはいろいろ問題あると思ってるんだけれどもだからといって何もしてなかったんです震災前。でもやるあの本当にこう津波の直撃を受けていろんな人が亡くなってこう街にはヘドロとかがれきとか転がった車だらけでやることがたくさんあったそういう中で体を動かしてるうちにもともと街の人たちも本当素晴らしい人たちがたくさんいるんだなっていうのを気づいたんですね津波で全部壊されたところからもともと抱えてた問題を解決したいよねっていう思いを持っている。じゃあ一緒に石巻を新しく作ろうよ戻すんじゃなくて作ろうよって結成したのが石巻 2.0 っていうプロジェクトでありでバラバラだけれども平均で2 3 0人くらいはいろんな人が来ますね誰にでも使ってもらっていいフリーでこうインターネットを使ってもらったりとか携帯電話とかパソコン PC の充電をしてもらったりあと普通にノートパソコンを自分の広げて調べ物したり石巻にもともと震災前からそういうスペースがなかったんですあこういうことしてるんだったら今度こういうお手伝いができますよとかじゃあ一緒にこういうことをやりましょうっていうようなつながりをできるだけ生むような運営をしている、まあ、自然にもうすでにここで化学反応が起きて新しいプロジェクトが起きたりとかもしている、うん、で若者たちはここに残って何かものを作りながら石巻で生きていこうっていう動きがたくさん生まれていますそういう人たちが石巻でいろんなことをあのアイデアを落としていってくれたこれが一番大きな財産だと思うんですよ我々はこう落としてくれたアイデアの種をこう水をかけて芽を出して育てるヒントとして大きく拡散していくべきだなって思っていろんな活動をしています。